Oi oi, I know plenty of you will be pleased that the flat racing is back, but for me it's all about the dogs this time of year. You'll know that I'm a National Hunt enthusiast, I take a bit of a break from the National Hunt side of things, out away from sort of researching previous races, looking at store sales, uh, reviewing stuff that's happened last season basically. Um, but there's got to be something to keep my eye in, um, and it is greyhound racing, something I've always had a big passion for. I did say in a previous video with Daryl that I was going to give you guys a bit more of an insight into it, whether you anyone's interested or not remains to be seen, but for this summer anyway I'm going to put a few videos out giving a few tips and tricks of the things that I look for at certain tracks, why I think the ground racing is a really decent better medium, um, and yeah we'll be going from there. So on the Chelt Mental Facebook page I've set up a separate group, shared that on the main page, the reach figures that I'm getting from that don't seem very high so... Don't know whether everyone's getting to see it or not. It may just be that no one's interested, and, and that's fine if that's the way that it is. But I thought I'd stick a video out as well just to document what's, where the start is. Obviously, ground racing was back this Monday. We're Friday now, so we've got five days of it in. Um, we've already had some reasonable results. I'll also be touching on the Colossus uh, Greyhound pools on there as well. I'm possibly going to regret doing that if more people get involved. Um, which you'll see if you watch more about the Colossus bets, why it would be negative for me if more people got involved. Um, but hey ho, I'm gonna share it anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get on with some stuff on the screen behind. I'll disappear out of this so that you're just watching that. There's some stuff that I've recorded during the week about dogs that I fancy, just to give you an insight on those. I'll keep them fairly brief. Um, and then we'll just come back as a quick little brief roundup of what I'll be aiming to do over the next few weeks. Um, and then if you're interested, join that Facebook group and the details will be posted in there and then I'll just do the YouTube videos every now and again. But without further ado, let's have a look back at what's gone on this week so far. So recording the views before the race, um, looks to me as though one, two, three, four potentially could all get to the bend around about the same time. Um, I think four is going to move in, which I think is going to, well, I know will cause problems to three. It just depends how well three and four trap. Four, three could be in front uh, and maybe gone far enough for four not to affect it. If that does happen, he might prove difficult to catch. But five, Droopy's house is known as a stayer. Um, We'll be staying on late on. I think if four does move across inside, even if it tucks in behind three, five's going to get a lovely draw, should lead up six. Um, and unless there's any trouble in the inside and they bounce out and knock into five, I do think that five looks the one. But Swift Whisker in five's the one that I'm most interested with. Um, stays on, I think there could be some trouble in there early. Um, it was only March 2018, bitch. She's been in season in ja January, so she was already out anyway, so I think she could have more to offer. The negative behind this is, in the time of me going through the rest of the card, she has already been bat. She was 9-2 to two top price with Betfair Paddy Power. They snipped into 3-1, to one, and I have a feeling that's because of the uh, chunk that I put up on the exchange to be matched as slightly bigger than those bookie prices, but there we are. So here I'm showing you a particular arb. Uh, Woodcox Amelia was a dog that I fancied anyway. We can see it's 11 to 4 price there with bet 365. I've struck my bet on, mainly driven by the fact that the exchange price is marginally shorter. Now there's not a great deal of liquidity in this market. You can see there's only a few pounds in there to be looking at. Um, and if we look at the gradient on here, some money's been matched at 5, at, well, 5.0, so 4 to 1. But there's not a lot of money that's going to be traded in there. Um, I think this dog was shorter than a, an 11 to 4 poke. You can see there the price is shortened a little bit on the exchanges, although again, for small pounds, this is why the bet was struck with bet 365. Um, and this will put us into a position. So you see there the price has already dropped down to 2 to 1. Um, we're looking a little bit closer to the off now. You can see the exchanges have sorted themselves out. They're about 7 to 4. The 75 pounds I've struck on it, I could throw away 130 pounds of my profit for the free ARB, and that would be a full 1 point ARB. So because I backed it at 3.75, laying about that price means that I could be running for £75 completely and utterly risk-free. There's on the move for race two at Crayford. Big gamble on Woodcox Amelia. Trap two, two to one, now 11 to eight. After a really good trial last time. They jump away, favourite last out the box is Slow Lane Queen with the lead by a length and a half into the opening bend. Favourites now into second with six on the outside. Then it's a big gap to four, five and one. Trap three leading the way. Woodcox Amelia now gets to the outside, now cuts to the inside. Very quick footed there and the favourite takes the lead. Trap three's going to cut the corner and have a final go and gets back in front and Trap three will win it. 
So we saw there that the results don't always go your way, but that's the way that it is. So on to Colossus now. Um, I've placed a place pool bet here. I created a syndicate. It didn't get funded, so 10% rides because I'm allowed to leave that in there. You can see from these results, I've doubled up in the first, the third, the fourth, the fifth. We didn't double up in the sixth, unfortunately. That's slightly annoying, but we doubled up in the seventh. So in terms of our penny stakes, we are running for 32p. Um, the pool is £2,000. Because it's under, a fine, under one unit, we'll be winning it. We are running for £640. Now, um, because it's a place eight, the dog doesn't need to win. This particular dog is a roundabout and a five to four favourite. It's a hurdle race, which are often fraught with danger. So what I've done here is I've just put a place layup on the exchange. Again, liquidity is so small in the win market that the place market's even worse. But I've just put a place lay in here for £200 liability, so I get £400 back. So if the dog comes nowhere, I'll get £400 profit from here, the £21.60 lost on Colossus. If it wins or places, then I will win the jackpot. Or in this instance, £640 off of that place eight pool. Beautiful. And away in racing they go. Racing away then, and Trap 5 off to a really good start. Oh, goodness me! Oh, we lost her poor old Trap 5 there as he came around the turn. That was desperate. It's four that goes on with six as they jump over the uh, next one down the back. Two and three just in behind them. Four jumping for fun off the front end. Six is trying to close up. These two are pulled rapidly clear coming into the straight. Then four and six having their own private barging match. It could be all on the jump. Oh, desperate. Four and six. We're one back in third, and the good news is, is that Trap 5 is up. So you've seen a few examples there. Um, we've got some winning stuff in there. We've got a particular arb that could have been placed um, that wasn't done by myself. And the strong reason why I'm against those types of bets as an advice for you guys is that we're pinching value on prices. You may not always have the position to get out. I don't want to be giving people a strategy where it's a lot more effort than it maybe needs to be for some people. So sticking a bet on is one thing, getting you some values another. Um, trying to put yourself in a position to arb, sit there, especially if we get a handful of people that are interested. It doesn't take too many 25 pounds or 50 quids before the liquidity has gone in the market and it just means it's different for us. But you know that's something we can move on to as time goes on and if people want me to elaborate on those, we can do that too. But there's a few different ways we can look at this. The long and the short of it is I'm going to be picking winners is the aim. I'm going to give you my view of why I'm doing it. Um, and I'm confident enough to put this sort of thing out there on the World Wide Web. I'm not saying I'm a tipster, anything like that with these. Obviously, I will be giving you what I fancy in there. It's more of an educational piece. And obviously, the easiest way to do that with dog racing is to look at the card the way that I've done it, to talk and talk through my selections, what, how I think the race might pan out, things like that. Um, and then once we've got a little bit of a feel for how things are going on that front, and once you've got a bit more graded racing that's taken place for the next six weeks, and the bias of you know, lack of fitness, COVID, all those sort of things is out of the equation. I will then put a bit more of a sighter into the fact of what you want to be looking for at certain tracks. Um, the, there's, just, there's lots of things, I won't elaborate on them now, but there's just lots of things. Um, and again, not claiming to know everything, but these are things that I've picked up over the years. And I imagine that rather than spending years losing money, maybe doing okay making money, but maybe years spending some time making a few little rookie mistakes, these insights might help you. They might help to fine tune what you're already doing, or you might decide that you're not interested in them anyway, and you know that's fine, that's that's just is what it is. But the reason the Chat Mental page is set up in the first place is just to share my views on things, that's all they are, they're my views. If it helps someone out in the long run, then happy days. I know the horse racing stuff has helped out plenty. Hopefully the Greyhound thing will get it in there as well. And then given the fact that I do love Greyhounds, uh, I love it as a sport as well, I can only imagine that the more people that are interested in it, the more people that appreciate that it is a decent sport um, and these dogs are well looked after, all those bits and pieces, um, hopefully it will make the sport thrive for more years to come. So that's the end of this first part. I will be trying to do, well I will be, I'll do a weekly roundup of what's been going on. Loads of the stuff's going to be going in that Facebook group so if you're really interested join into that. Uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you'll get notifications if you click that bell button as well. Uh, of when I put new videos up. This content for the short term is going to be Greyhound related. Then looking towards the end of the summer, we'll be getting back to doing pre well, a, a review of last season um, and then building all the way up to the Cheltenham Festival that has been and gone. And then we'll be looking forward towards next season, what we can learn from what we've seen out of that. But thanks for all your support, guys. I appreciate it. Any feedback's welcome. And 